guys, my name's Aaron from Geekilemi Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. Now in this tutorial, which is part one of two, we're gonna be creating a very fun, a very addictive reaction-based game called Traffic Lights. Now in this first part, we're gonna solely design the interface for this game, make sure we get everything all set up, even make it universal so it works on all different screen sizes and device types. Ready for part two in the next tutorial where we begin to start coding it. Now this tutorial has been taken directly from our iOS 10 and Xcode 8 complete Swift free and Objective C course, where you can create fantastic, fun, addictive and very useful applications and games with over 40 hours of video content within Swift free and Objective C. And if you check out the link in the description, you can get this course with a huge discount only using the link down below. So make sure you go check that out and let's begin with this tutorial. Now what we're gonna be creating is a game called Traffic Lights. And what this basically gives us the ability to do is we're gonna have an image of traffic lights start to tick down from red to amber or orange to green. And once it reaches green, a timer will then begin. It's then down to our user to press a big red button and the quicker they press it, the lower their score will be. Now the lower the score, the better, as this is gonna judge our user's reaction. So think of this as a simple and basic reaction game, which is very addictive. You're gonna see yourself playing it over and over again to see if you can beat your own score, and it's something to challenge your friends with. So overall, it's a very addictive game. Now we're gonna be using some of the topics we've previously talked about in the course to create this game, as well as discover new topics such as adding images in and using constraints and making sure the application works universally. Now this is over a two part lecture to create this game and in the first part, we're gonna be focusing on designing our interface, getting it all set up before we move on to part two where we begin to code it and see our game work in its full glory. Now, as I mentioned just then, we're gonna be using images within our application. Now, it's something we haven't covered in the topic yet, and further on in the course, we talk about images in greater detail and how we can use them. So, on this lecture, in the downloadable resources, you'll be see a resource pack which contains all the images I'm gonna be using to create this project. So feel free to download those as you kind of walk through this video so you can use the exact images to create the exact same game. Now the images we're gonna be using, I have them open here. I have a traffic light and we have different versions of the traffic light. And you see you got our kind of amber slash orange slash yellow light. We got our green, we got our red, we got a big red button and we have a simple road which we're gonna be using as a background. So we're gonna have a pretty cool designed looking application. So the first thing I do then is add in all of these images. So again, make sure you download the resource pack now to add images in, you wanna head over to the assets.x cassettes here, where we have the ability to add in our app icon and other features like that, but we'll come on to that later in the course. And all we need to do is select all of our images, as you can see here, and drag and drop them into our listing. And it simply adds all of our images in. The assets folder basically handles all of our images so we can then reference them at any point within our application to display them. You can see they're now all placed in. So we've got our images in our project, so we're gonna head over to our main .storyboard where we're now going to design our interface. So then, images, they need to be displayed within an image view. And again, it's a very simple process to do. It doesn't require any code, but yet you can still use code to display images, but we come on to talk about that in greater detail further on in the course. Now then, the first one I'm gonna do then is start to build our interface. I'm gonna start with the background and work up. So what I'm gonna do then is drag and drop my image view in, and I'm gonna make it fill up the whole of our view. So this is gonna be our background. So within the attributes inspector, we have this ability to now name an image. And the name, if I go back to my assets folder here, of my background is simply called road. So back within the main.storyboard, in the image attribute here, just simply type out the name of the file and add it in. As you can see, it's now added in. There's a few adjustments I want to simply do. 
You may or may not see there, if I bring up my images again, it's quite larger and it's looking quite narrow on this screen. So what I like to do is if you're using an image that's bigger than the image view that you're displaying it in, a cool little kind of a tip or scale you can place on it is simply scale uh, um, aspect fill. That simply changes how the image reacts or gets displayed within the image view. As you can see now, it's now scaled proportionally, but this stuff either sides. As the screen size gets bigger and smaller, our image is going to stay in scale and just grow bigger or smaller. So it looks pretty cool. Then I need to make sure that I select clip subviews. Now, as I've used aspect fill and some of the image is actually not being displayed, it's either side of the image view, which you cannot see. We need to make sure that is selected as when we go to build and when we add in our constraints, it can really mess up how the image view reacts when it gets resized. So make sure you select that feature on the side there. And then once we've got that all placed in there, we're now going to add in some constraints. So what we want to do is pin this image view to the whole border of our view. So again, when we build on different screen sizes and devices, the constraints will stretch the image view, pin it to all the side to make sure it looks the same on each, again, device or screen size. So to do this, make sure you select it on the image view and go down to the bottom where we have our pin option just here. And I'm going to select all the sides here, so the left down, uh, right, and the top there. So I want to pin it to all the edges and then add in those four constraints. So you may or not see now, we've got some, a few little blue lines around. Uh, this tells us that we're now pinned to all the side. So then, our next image we're going to add in is going to be our traffic light. So this is what we're going to use. Ooh, if we go back there, this is what we're going to use to obviously uh, create our countdown. So we're going to be working with NS timers and we're going to create a countdown, like a three, two, one, go kind of system. But we're not going to use um, the countdown in terms of displaying three, two, one. We're going to use the traffic lights as our three, two, one, go system. This is why we've got the different color lights. So drag it down now so it's quite, quite a decent sized view. And if I add in our first traffic light um, image, which I believe it's just simply called traffic light, and I'm going to simply do um, aspect fit. There we go. Now, by selecting aspect fit, it means it's going to fit the whole image inside of the image view, not like aspect fill, where it also fits it outside. It's going to fit it inside and make sure, again, it scales it in proportion so there's no distortion on the image. Now, we come to adding constraints uh, in just a moment. We're going to now configure the rest of our interface. So what we need to do now is then have the ability to also display our other timer, our secondary timer, which is going to display our score. So once it reaches go, then we're going to have a label rapidly start increasing in numbers. And like I said before, it's down to our user to press the big red button, which when they press it, it will stop the counter from counting. And the lower their score, the better they did. So we need to display that within a label. So if I drag and drop my label in here, I space it out so that again that's quite large. And before I come on to that, I'm going to now add in a button, as this is going to be our, um, the button for our big red button. And just like image views, buttons can also handle images. So you can see here we have the ability to add in an image and a background. Now, if you choose to select image, it puts the image on the button in the foreground. But if you place it in the background, you can then have text over the top of it. So I'm going to place in my red button as a background to the button. And you can see now it's a little bit out of proportion here. So I'm going to make sure that my button is the same in its height as it is within its width. So in the size inspector, uh, the width, uh, the height, sorry, is 187. And I make the width the same. There we go. So it's a round circular button. Let's resize everything here. There we go. Right, so we've got these in there. I'm just going to configure the rest of my object. So we need to change how the label is being displayed and the text within the button. So back to the attributes inspector. The first thing you do then is center the text, and the black color doesn't really stand out much. So we're going to change it to white, and I'll change the font as well. So put that to custom. Uh, have it to new. That probably sounds um, good, and we'll go for a quite a large, um, thick-looking font. So this may be a good one. So as I up the size, let's go to about 50. And to make it stand out a little bit more, let's place a shadow on it. So let's choose to have um, black on it. And then our 
make the shadow just a little bit bigger on each side. So you go, it pops out quite large there. So our label there is going to display the timer that's going to rapidly start increasing when the game has begun. So the same for our button now, we need to change the text from within inside of it. So our text color, we're going to select that. So let's go to white. Uh, that's going to stand out really nice. And I'll do the same kind of font as we got in our label to kind of keep a theme and increase that size. I think uh, 30 should be just about enough there. Now change what it says. We can simply have this say start because this button is also going to react as the start game button and the stop game button. So it's going to be very versatile in how we're going to be using it. So we've got those objects on. We just need to now make sure that they also have constraints so uh, they resize when we're on different views. Okay then. So the first thing we're going to do then is select our traffic light here. And I'm going to also pin it like I did to the imagery behind, but I'm not going to pin it to the bottom, not just yet. I want to pin it to the left, right, and the upper part. And let's say we're going to make it, um, let's just add the constraints and um, then right click on it and drag a link to itself to select aspect ratio. This means as the size screen gets bigger and smaller, it's going to scale in proportion our image view to fit on the screen perfect. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for our button down below. Uh, but the only difference is this time is I'm going to make sure that if I pin it to the left, bottom and right, not pin it to the top because we're going to add the constraints to the um, label ourselves and add those in. And again, I'm going to add an aspect ratio to it. So again, that resizes, uh, goes up and down as the screen view changes. Now for our label, what I'm simply going to do now then is just pin it to all around it. So that's just going to be going to pin to all the objects around so it will not move. And then if I go to build and run, we can then simply see how it's going to look on our screen. So the simulator we're building it to now is the same size as the interface we've created it in. So you won't see much of a difference at all, or hopefully, um, providing the constraints don't really, uh, well, basically they like each other, which they should do. There should be no reason why any of these objects should be uh, different sizes, but we'll see now as we build and run. There you go. So that's kind of the basis of our application so far. We got our button, we got our image there, and our label. Again, we created it in the same interface. So let's start building this project. And let's say, let's go for a larger simulator, the larger iPhone 6 Plus simulator. So this means the constraints now have to work for the objects to now get bigger. So we've got our button and our traffic light image that scale in proportion and our label is just in the middle working as a buffer zone and again it's linked to either side so that will also resize itself. So we just wait for the simulator to now load up. So you can see now it's loaded up, it's a lot bigger and you can see how the objects now rescale and size themselves. So we know the constraints are now working perfect. So then as the next lecture we're going to go on to program our game to start working. What we're now going to do then is click on our files owner, bring up our assistant editor, and to save a little bit of time, we're going to now add in the actions and outlets. So if I space out our action and outlet section here and drag over our traffic light image here, I'll simply call this our traffic, if I spell it right there, traffic light, connect that in. We're going to simply then have our counter label add that in and then we're going to also create an action for our button which is going to be our start start button so our start stop making sure that is an action and because we're going to be having this button be very versatile within our application i'm also going to create it as an outlet as it becomes the start button and a stop button we want to basically change the text that's being displayed within it so i just if you call this our start stop button and then connect that in. So there we go then, we've added in our actions and outlets all for our game so far. So if I close the assistant editor, go back to the standard editor, we're now gonna be moving on to part two where we're gonna start to code our whole application and you'll see it start working right in front of your eyes. So if you made it to this point now, feel very proud of yourself that you've actually 
created an interface for a game. We've added in the constraints, so we know it's going to work perfect on all different screen sizes and devices as the objects now, again, resize themselves. So it's going to look beautiful on each device. So again, feel proud of yourself as we now move on to part two as we start to code our very first game. So there we have it, we've now designed the interface all ready to start coding in the next tutorial. And if you'd like to learn more about iOS development within Swift 3 or Objective-C, make sure you check out our full course, links down below will be in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.